The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to have Jeff Huge from Alpha Insights as our guest uh, today. Tomorrow is Dr. Al Larson, the double PhD, my good buddy from Thornton, Colorado. And then on Wednesday, I believe we have uh, Shane Smolian as our guest. Uh, I hope that's right. <laughs> I'll have to double check the calendar when I get a chance. Anyway, let's move on here to talk a little bit. You can see the European markets have nothing to do with bullishness. They've been hit pretty hard. And most of that is directly related to the euro. And uh, that's the main thing that you want to be watching is that euro is just getting slammed. And we thought it was going to get slammed, but it's so oversold, it's due for a bounce. We've got the dollar index back up at that 96 level on the weekly. It's hit the 50% retracement. You remember at the 96.02, it was at 382. Now we're at 50%. But with all the news going on with the new chairman or getting his new uh, partner, his sidekick, now they're the dream team. And uh, we'll see how that works out. Okay, let's move on here to a few things that I think are relatively important. I posted a chart here. For, the Elliott Wave Theory folks got some really great charts. And I, when I have a chance at one that looks really interesting, I'd like to put it up. The reason why I'm showing you this, it's showing you how the market reacts to these epidemics. You can see sometimes they happen right on the bottom. I mean, it's a perfect example of SARS and COVID market was making a bottom at those times. Now, as most of you know, I've been watching that 1.618 expansion on the S&P and also on the uh, the Apple, which was absolutely massacred this morning, and then also the NASDAQ. But there was one chart this weekend that literally scared me to death, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have uh, – Jeff on, as our guest here today, and this was also from the Elliott Way folks, and it was basically showing the uh, relationships of new highs to new lows. You can see new lows are surging, okay? And then you'll look at and you'll look at the look at the points. Every time that those things are surging, has been a bottom of the market. I mean, every time, look, every time it's a surging, look, and look where we're surging now. And then I said, I told Jeff, I said, my God, I said, there's nothing that looks bearish about this chart at all. And that's what that that's what little what really scared me. And also, there was uh, another one that was uh, a little troubling to me. And I, you know, not they all troubling to me, but I watch it. Unfortunately, let me get this up here. I'll get it to you right here. And that was this one right here. I wanted to bring this up to your attention because this is the uh, weekly uh, S&P. And you'll remember here, folks, um, you know how much I respect the 1.618 level. And, folks, when we went above this 116 uh, level, 116.60, uh, it, it just literally went up, went up quite a bit after that. But once it broke that in that first hour when they announced that Powell – was going to be, you know, the uh, the savior of the world. Uh, that's that's what kicked that thing in the rear end. So it, it's interesting to to watch it anyway. The, the main one that we had, we only had two positions on coming in here today, folks. Uh, one was in the gold market. We've been bearish gold for quite some time, and uh, up at that 78 percent level up there at 1878. Uh, uh, that was the ABCD measured 1879. And uh, we thought that there would be a possibility that we might have some, uh, I put this in the video last night, that gold could hold 1830. I said, but if it doesn't, I said, it's going to break. And it got all the way down to 1812. I think we're heading lower in gold. So I uh, recommend if you're still in that short to hang in there. Uh, it's up well over uh well over 60 bucks, which is a good sign. Anyway, those are just a couple. Now, I wanted to uh, bring to your attention the silver market because silver today, I'll get this up here so you folks can take a look at it. The low today in silver, okay, was the exact 50% retracement of the low that we made back on November 4th. And here again, you see silver was way behind gold as far as the ABCD. Gold made the ABCD at 1879. Silver didn't even didn't even come close. That to me 
is, uh, you know, that's not a good sign either. Longer term, I'm very, very bullish in gold, but frankly, uh, I'm getting a little more concerned the fact that it gives up so easily, and uh, that's not a that's not a very uh, not a very good sign when you're looking at some of these things. Another one that should be very troubling to the gold bulls, and I'm beginning less and less bullish, I guess, as in my old age, but this is the GDX. I just heard Basil talking about it, but look at the GDX. It just made a 382 from the high way back in August. You know, you remember where we were in August in gold, folks. We were, at, uh, we were knocking on the door of 2000, and look where that GDX is. It just made a 50% retracement off the June high and a 38% retracement off of the uh, – one in July, that's not a bullish chart. You know, if it, if it turns around, it will be, but it certainly isn't. That's what we're paying it to. You know, that's it. Gold is resilient. It's holding. Longer term, I'm basically, you know, gold's a great trading vehicle, folks. You can see how it follows the ABCD patterns. You know, and you know, one thing I can tell you with 100% accuracy, I am so good at finding these patterns after the fact that it's amazing. I do find a few of them before the fact, but sometimes I don't find them till after the fact, and that's just the name of the game. So let's, uh, let's remind ourselves uh, – it's not about the money that you make. It's about the money you don't lose. So let's uh, keep our keep our uh, powder dry and look at it. Now here's this is a you're going to have to do some homework here, folks, because I can't get all the charts up here. Here is the Dow Jones. This is the Dow Jones E-mini. To me, this is a really important chart, and I'll show you why. There's the Dow Jones E-mini right here. And we were expecting support to come in here around 35,278. Now, what we did was we came down and matched that low a little bit. But then I want you to do this for your homework. Go take a half-hour chart and look at the Dow E-mini and see what the high of the day was today. The high of the day today was none other than a .382 of the whole move. Now, stop and think. This is in the midst of the most bullish news they've got uh, for, for the market in a long time, the fact that we've got uh, – you know, Maverick and his sidekick Goose are running the uh, the Fed now for a while. So what we're going to be looking at is maybe, you know, free money again. Of course, the bond market continues to go lower as expected. So uh, remind ourselves that uh, these things are, are moving. But the, the Dow is not acting very bullish at all, folks. The Dow just made a 382 of the high. I mean, you, and you stop and think we've got the new highs in the S&P, new highs in the NASDAQ. I mean, golly, that to me means something. Now, if the if the Dow turns around and gets really strong today, up 300 and something, then that that it's it certainly failed. But it went right to the exact tick at the 382. So I, I think that's an important uh, important factor uh, to uh, keep in mind. Now, I had another question about uh, cryptocurrencies, and I'm going to bring this up here. I just just pull it up off the internet it's nothing fancy or anything but the person asked me do these patterns work uh in the the cryptocurrencies they have to folks because the public's involved there's no question about it. all this is is a uh this is a, a two-day chart well actually it's a five-day chart but you can see there i put the the dotted lines that's a perfect three drive to a bottom uh, pattern just absolutely perfect and that bottom right there at 56 is exactly a 382 off the daily. So that's why we've had this rally. So let's take a little break here. 877 927 6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at DFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the dollar index on the weekly, and as you can see, the 50% retracement of that whole move. This is a weekly chart, folks, it is at 56.56. I believe that's been the high so far today in the dollar index. Now, the euro is continuing to weaken, and it's very, very oversold. Um, it's way below the 61% retracement, so I, I can't really touch that. I don't have any three-drive pattern or anything to make me want to be a buyer of the euro, even though I'd like to be, just because I'd like to be a seller of the dollar index. And, uh, you know, that's at a – I don't trade the dollar index uh, for a whole lot of reasons. Anyway, but anyway, I'm watching that euro because of the fact that uh, we are getting close. The problem is it's not close enough, and I can't quantify the risk. And so I'm just paying attention to what's going on. The only trades we had coming in today, uh, of course, we, we bought uh, – we had a special video about the crude oil and the uh, heating oil at absolutely perfect number, 75 in the Jan oil. The low was uh, 7501, and the low in the the uh, heating oil was exactly this, the exact price. We took out last week's low by one tick, and then it immediately rallied five cents. So those are the kind that you know where you stand at any particular time, and that's what you're looking at. The main thing today, folks, is to watch the stock market, because if the Dow Jones should happen to turn down today and close into the red, what you saw – was a 382 retracement in the midst of all that news that was happening with the chairman and all that stuff. So uh, I think that's the most important chart uh, that I'm watching today. And, you know, it's way early. You watch it, uh, 1130 in the morning, you know, so many things can happen between now and 4 o'clock that uh, you have to be uh, extremely careful. Okay, now I wanted to uh, bring one other uh, chart uh, to your attention, and if I can just find it, I'll be okay. Oh, shucks, where is it? Oh, I, I had the Apple chart ready to go, but the problem was I was not able to bring it up to uh, to, to put in the room because I can't size it down properly. That's the problem. But Apple, once Apple went above 161 today, folks, that was the 1.618 retracement, and we talked about that yesterday. And once we went through there, I mean, that was, I mean, here's the number one stock 
uh, you know, that everybody holds and boom, away it goes. And it's, uh, you know, totally off to the races. So 161 was the expansion in that. Uh, that was, you know, one of the reasons why I, I, there were a lot of different reasons, but I didn't issue any sell signals in the stock market, even though I wanted to, because I wanted to see what would happen this morning, because I was a little concerned about that new highs to new lows chart. And the fact that the uh, NASDAQ had closed above the 1.618 by about 20 points. And these things are so accurate that they don't uh, they don't stop at those numbers for not a reason. Now, here's what I want. I've got a few minutes here. I want to go back in time here because we're in the same situation as where we were, in my opinion. I'm, remember, I'm a chartist, okay? So this is an upside-down version of what I think we're seeing right now. This is the, you can see the three drive to a bottom pattern here. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average trading right around uh, 7,000 here. The low came in uh, on the 9th of March, well, actually the 5th at uh, 6,600. And uh, from there, uh, we continued to rally uh, to get up to 36,000. But this was a perfect three drive to a bottom pattern. Uh, I had the double ABCDs, everything that you wanted. I believe we're, we're very close to that. And with the fact that we had that big eclipse uh, over the on, on the 19th uh, and the new and the the full moon, uh, everything was set up that it looked like the high was going to be Friday, and I was really expecting the market to open lower Sunday night. And when it opened higher, I said, "Uh oh, something's not right." And uh, I said, "We got to wait." And so that's why I was waiting to see what happens. It's not about how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. So let's look at that. Okay, now the uh, the, uh, the the Bob Bob, you're talking about the natural gas. That's a very important one because uh, we were watching that. Uh, I hope I have a chart on it because I I really wanted to bring it up because it had a lot of support there at that uh, uh, seven uh, seven sixty nine. We got down to I think seven sixty eight, and then we reversed right away. So and that that might be all related to the the heating oil and the crude oil. I don't know, but I just couldn't couldn't do everything. But uh, that that was one of the ones that I was watching. Let me think. Maybe I can get this up here and show you what I was there. There we got this up here. I think this will show up pretty good, and we'll be able to see it without too much trouble. Let me know if that chart uh, posts okay. The key the key folks is if you look at the red box at that 466 level. That's the key. You see, that's 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 the key, Bob. Because once it once it took that out by just a little bit, and there was no more selling, bada bing, bada boom. It had only one way to go, and that was up. And that's why, uh, of we happened to be long crude oil and the heating oil, but it couldn't do the natural gas anyway. That's what we we're paying attention to. So we'll see uh, what we're watching on here. All I'm trying to do, folks, is showing you how some of these patterns work. And believe me, they only work part of the time, but my goodness, they work better than just about anything I've seen. And so I'm, you know, a little prejudiced to that. So we'll look at it. We've got a chart from our good friend, Mr. Jim Bartoleone, over in San Diego, California, surfing on the beach today with his son, JJ. Let's get this up here and take a look at it, folks. This is the long term, folks. We've got to use Basil Chapman on this one because we go all the way back to July the 5th of 1932 I think I was 12 at that time anyway from that level you can see that he has drawn an ABCD pattern and he says it sure looks like an ABCD pattern to me and you know Jimmy it sure does it's spot on and boy we're right up there too that that is a continuation we've actually made the D part so I don't know how the transportations is doing right now hey folks I did something really cool let me tell you what I did I got a few minutes here you know there's a big supply chain you can't get anything right Sh shelves are empty what I did over over a 20 minute period last night I went on to Amazon I ordered a little over a thousand dollars worth of electronic stuff toys, everything I could think of. I didn't buy any of it. I just ordered it. And I wanted to see if any of it was available. And it was all available. There wasn't one thing that was not available. So I don't know what that stuff is, but uh, there's no, there, we don't have any shell problem here in Tucson. But, uh, you know, you can go on Amazon and get about anything. So, uh, of course, I canceled all those orders. Maybe they when they went through, they wouldn't say it unavailable. I didn't want to do that. But the fact that they you know, accepted the order was telling me, yeah, maybe they do have it. So I'll have, I just don't trust the news anymore, folks. It's just so, 
you know, I, and I'm talking about everything. Even foxes in there, you know, they, they, they just beat you up too much. And I, I shouldn't get involved with the politics. And I've already said more than I wanted to. We're going to have Jeff Huge as our guest today, folks. Tomorrow we have Dr. Al Larson. And on uh, Wednesday, we do have the wolf trader himself. Uh, Shane Smolian will be our guest. So we'll have some uh, good folks to uh, give us some terrific information uh, on these markets here. So that's pretty much what we're watching here today. Uh, we're going to take a little break now, I think, as soon as the music comes up. And then we're going to have Jeff Huge on. And I'm going to have to uh, put the charts in separately. So hopefully... We'll be able to get them in one at a time and uh, not make any not make any mistakes this time and get everything moving okay. All right, I think that's about it. Should the music be on now? I think it's way past the time. There we go. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. I hope. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show today. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Jeff, now I have to uh, tell you that my chart 
uh, my technical abilities with this stuff is a little limited. So I've got the charts, but I don't, I don't know if they're in the order. So what I'd like to do is I'll tell you which chart I'm looking at and if you could discuss it. The first one is that NASDAQ S&P correlation chart that goes back uh, a very, very long time I thought was quite interesting. Oh, this is the one I sent you over the weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, those so, are the ones that I... So, so um, yeah, I, I, I would just point out that the NASDAQ made a new high, but we've been experiencing a divergence in breadth over the course of the year. Uh, in fact, um, those stocks in the NASDAQ that are trading above their 200-day moving average, which by most people is considered to be the long-term trend, has just ticked down to about an 18-month or 20-month low uh, this most recent Friday. I think we got down to around 37%, which is, you know, basically two-thirds of the stocks in the NASDAQ or 2,000 of the 3,000 in the composite are actually trading below their long-term trend. That's a concern. We also saw an expansion in new lows uh, last week as well, just as the NASDAQ was making new highs. And, you know, that's extremely unusual. In fact, we posted the largest number of new lows for NASDAQ stocks since the March uh, March 2020 panic lows. So, you know, this is, I guess, um, concerning, right? Yep. Now, the next one I wanted to ask about, and I really liked it. Well, I liked them all, actually. Folks, what I did was over the weekend, I, I got so – when what Jeff was just talking about was the fact that we were making so many new lows on the NASDAQ. And uh, uh, the Elliott, we, Elliott Wave people brought that to my attention. And I look, I said, well, my God, every time that happened, there's been a low. So I was a little bit, a little bit concerned about it. So I asked Jeff to explain it to me, and he certainly did. And here is the 2021 cycle composite. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at here, my friend? Yeah. You, you know, we followed the cycle composite pretty closely this year for a couple of reasons. It's, it's the first year of the decade. And so mm -hmm. what the cycle composite really is is the – combination of the seasonal data, the four-year presidential cycle, and the 10-year decennial cycle. And so what they do is they aggregate those cycles going back to 1928. So you've got, you know, mm -hmm. close to a century's worth of data here that, you know, effectively mm -hmm. shows you how the market has traded in the past. And then they put it into a composite line, aggregating it together. And that's the dark blue line that you'll see. Mm -hmm. And so the market followed that pretty closely up through August. And then it started to um, diverge. We got a little bit of a sell-off in September, about almost 6%. Um, you know, the cycle composite was looking for something deeper based on the history of these, these cycles, right? We didn't quite mm -hmm. get there. And then we broke out and made these new highs, right? But going into the end of the year, we've got this cluster of highs and lows, right? It looks like there's going to be a very uh, highly volatile two-month period going into year-end. And what's interesting to us is that um, famed cycle composite analyst, or I should say famed cycle analyst, Paul McRae Montgomery, who spent a lot of his time studying market history, studying um, investor psychology, and, and also studying astronomy, showed how uh, various cycles of the moon and eclipses and, and planetary angles, et cetera, lined up with historic periods in market history, and so he used that data to forecast um, further trend changes. And, and it's unusual to see so many cycle turn dates emerge in such a short period of time from about October 20th through the end of the year. And so we've marked them uh, to the period in the cycle composite line that actually looks like it's closest, and a couple of them are pretty precise within a day or two. And so we were actually looking for a low last Friday, and, and we didn't get it in the S&P necessarily. The S&P was a point away from its all-time high, and it's actually broken out this morning. The NASDAQ mm -hmm. made a new high. However, the Dow had pulled back to a three-week low, down almost 3%, and the Russell 2000 made a three-week low, down 5%. And those looked like they were in good proximity to cycle. Uh, we also saw a 20% decline in Bitcoin, which bottomed on Friday as well. And we think those are examples of markets that can probably cycle higher. And the S&P looks like it's carrying forward, as, as is the NASDAQ, both of which have made new highs today. So we think wow. that probably made a low. And we're looking at probably a rally into uh, the uh, December 4th 
time frame, which is the next major cycle turn, then a possible downturn into mid-December. Uh, Montgomery's got a cycle turn date on the 18th, and then we expect a rally into year-end to the next cycle turn date on January 2nd. Now, those last two mm-hmm. fall on weekend days, so it's plus or minus one trading day. Well, that's good. You have to put a circle on December the 4th, folks. That's a very important date in the state of Indiana. That's a national holiday in Indiana or a state holiday. It's Larry Bird's birthday. <laughs> Jeff, let's let's take a look. I'm a big Larry Bird fan, as you might guess. We'll take a look here at the internals of the market. This was a beautiful chart showing the fact that we've had a downsloping move, and I guess this has exploded to the upside today, hasn't it? Well, you know, the breadth has expanded a little bit today. This is a weekly chart, so we're really looking at a five-week moving average of advances less decline, so the net advancing uh, um, uh, number of issues, right? And mm-hmm. what we're really concerned about is the fact that week after week after week, month after month after month, we can't make a new high. And so that, that breadth divergence shows that you've got this narrowing participation in the market over time. And, you know, when, when the infantry leaves the generals on the charge up the hill, there's usually a retreat that follows. And so that's what concerns <laughs> us. We, we've also seen the momentum fail to make a new high as well. Uh, it ticked up a little bit last week, but, you know, we're still waiting to, to eclipse that, that April-May high uh, in terms of a five-week RSI oscillator uh, uh, momentum uh, average. And then volume has been terrible. Net advancing volume has been flat for the last five weeks. It was actually uh, negative last week. In fact, uh, down volume was two and a half times up volume last week. And so, you know, we look at these data and it's it's not impressive. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Let's take a quick look. Well, take a look. You don't have to be quick. Uh, this is investor sentiment. And what are you uh, looking at here, Jeff? So there's two different uh, put call ratios that we like to look at. One is the index put call ratio. That means that uh, you know um, traders would be buying more puts than calls the higher that line gets. Uh, we're close to two to one. It's like 1.9 to one today. And uh, that means that the traders are buying almost two puts to every call they're buying on the S&P 500. However, if you look at the bottom frame, these are um, put options on individual equities. And it's an aggregation of all the issues in the S&P 500 and oh. all the puts versus calls. And we're down to just point four. So, you know, investors are buying less than uh, one put for every two calls they're buying at this point. And so the moral of the story here is that investor sentiment looks pretty mixed. I mean, you've got investors who really love their stocks, right? Mm-hmm. But they're a little nervous about the market. Jeff, can you stay with us? We'd like to have of you course. on for another segment. We'll be right back with Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Jeff Huge Alpha Insights. And Jeff, I post your chart on the Elliott Wave uh, system. Do you want to tell the folks what you're looking at as far as your uh, wave count and stuff? I, I know that still looks pretty bullish to you, so try to give us an explanation. Yeah, I think that uh, we're in the midst of an advance that should take us up to around 4,800 on the S&P 500. Uh, we're getting awfully close, less than a percent to go before we get there versus uh, today's highs. And what the Elliott Wave Count tells us is that, you know, we probably either just completed a fourth wave of this final fifth wave move, or we're in the process of, of putting that in. It could be what's known as a flat uh, uh, correction, uh, which would mean that we would go down, up, then down again. And so if that's the case, we'd be looking for about a 38.2% retracement, probably get us back to around 45.50 at the lowest, uh, which is right where we broke out from, and then another final move up to that 48 or possibly higher target that we've been advocating uh, for the S&P. Um, the problem is once we get there, we don't have many options in terms of where we think the market can go from there. Could it eke out a little, you know, a few higher gains? Yeah, maybe a couple percent. But we think we're probably in that final run uh, that we would call cycle wave five, and it could terminate in the very near term, possibly even before year end or thereabout. And then we'd be looking for a pretty significant downturn in the market thereafter. Well, the next one is the one that I really wanted to save for last, and that is the one that uh, relates to the relationship between the NASDAQ and the uh, SPX. And to me, I mean, I'm looking at what happened in 2000 and where we are right now. My goodness, this looks like two rocket ships uh, and I imagine today is even going to be much higher because the Nasdaq was so strong earlier. We, you know, we've had a six, we've had a six hundred point move in the Nasdaq, three hundred up and three hundred down. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big swing today so far. It is no doubt, and yeah. you know, I think really the crux of that chart is simply that you know we've we, we've seen speculative excesses uh, start to reach the levels or even exceed the levels mm. that we saw back in two thousand. And, uh, you know, the vast majority of the stocks in the S&P 500 are really lagging, yet there's these seven, this handful of, you know, the, the so-called FANG stocks that equate to about 27% of the market cap of the S&P 500 and about 57% of the market cap of the NASDAQ 100. And what's happening here at year-end, Larry, and this is my assessment, is that professional portfolio managers are trying to save their performance going into year-end. And they're selling all of their second-tier growth stocks, and they're piling into these FANG index heavyweights in order to kind of preserve their uh, 
their uh, level of outperformance year to date. And that explains why you're seeing new lows accelerate as the market goes higher because the indexes themselves are so heavily weighted to those big seven, right? And uh, wow. you know, the new lows are just simply the purge of second tier stocks as money piles into those, um, those heavyweights. Wow, it's totally awesome. I, I love watching you work. I mean, I'm a, of course, I love charts because I'm a technician, but you do the best work of anybody I've seen in a long time, my friend. I tell you that, and you, I hope you take it with the, uh, the seriousness that I give it because I don't give out compliments uh, too much, but uh, you do a superb job in the way you line everything up, and then you put a little flavor of the fundamentals in, which is good. So I, I certainly want to thank you for being our guest, and I want to wish you a, a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, hopefully we'll have you on uh, probably right after the 1st of December. We'll see when the Dow is at 50,000, where we go from here. <laughs> that sounds terrific. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure, Larry, and you have a great yeah. Thanksgiving yourself. Hey, and look, July 4th is not too far down the road, so you're going to be above zero pretty soon. So just be be safe, okay? <laughs> I, I we'll joke. Do. I joke. I joke with Rich Anderson about that every day. Thanks a lot, Jeff, and a happy holidays to you. Take care. Okay, Bye -bye. folks. I, I want to spend just a second here to to show you a chart that I think is very important. I talked about it just a little while ago. I want to get it up here and bring it up to you again. And just be, to me, it's this important. So, well, if it's important to me, it has to be important to you, right? Hello, operator. I don't think so. But anyway, this is what I look at because I'm watching what the news is doing and all this stuff. But it's related to that that chart we were looking at uh, in the uh, Dow Jones. And I want to get that right here. So bear with me one second. And it won't take me very long. Uh, well, I'm saying that with uh, tongue in cheek. Let's just do the four hour. I think that'll do it. Yep, there we go. And here we are. We'll move this up here just a tiny bit so we can see the whole thing. And with a little luck, I think we're going to be able to do that. It might not be the whole chart, but you'll be able to get a good idea of what I'm looking at here. So let's uh, let's just give me a second now. I got that ready to go. Now bear with me. Now what I have to uh, shut the front door and raise the rent. There it is right here. But I've got to uh, got to change the screen resolution again to get it small. Otherwise, I'm uh, I'm in big trouble. So give me a second here. And uh, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think it was that important. And to me, it is. So we'll see. All right. Got that ready. Now, I think I'm ready to go. I think this is it. Shut the front door and raise the rent. And let's keep this party moving. Let's get on here. And I think we're ready to go. And this might be it with a little bit of luck. And I think it's... Uh, it's a little bit of luck. Okay, this is the Dow, last 14 days, four-hour chart. You'll see the ABCD at, right there at the bottom there, pretty close to the bottom on Friday. And then that, that's what, that was a beautiful ABCD pattern there that was also setting at a 61% retracement. The rally today, folks, we went up to the 382 that comes in at 35,900. And uh, that's that's all we've been able to do. And you notice that's an ABCD also on that four-hour chart. Now, this is almost the same as the rally that we had between the 12th and the 16th. The difference, it did it in just a few hours. But the fact that it can't get any higher so far, well, believe me, we've got three hours to four hours to go, anything can happen. But the fact that we're below that, 382, is not a bullish sign, boys and girls. Uh, I that's that's how I look at that. I, I hope the chart posted okay. That's my analysis of uh, what I'm looking at. So um, take it for what it's worth. And if you pay two cents, you pay twice as much as you should have. We had a question also from uh, Jeff in Philadelphia over the weekend, uh, actually Sunday night. And he wanted to know if he would hold a position in the yen trade being long the yen into a holiday weekend. And the answer to that, absolutely, unless you've got a huge lead, you don't want to do that. The reason why the risk exposure is too great, especially over holiday weekend, because sometimes these announcements comes out, uh, well, today with Powell, you never know when they're going to do these things. But uh, that's why you don't want to do it. you got to, you got to focus on that risk part because, you know, you can sit here and uh, take a couple of pot shots at these market and still be okay because eventually, you know, you're going to catch one of these patterns that lines up, you know, just absolutely spot on. So those are the few of the things that we're watching today along with a whole bunch of other things. So 
let's remind ourselves it's not how much your money you make it's how much money you don't lose that's the real key to this we got a break coming up here in a few seconds and we get back i want to just review a couple things about the u.s dollar and the euro because uh we're at real critical levels folks in this dollar index there's no question about it we have to pay attention 877-927-6648 Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to bring to your attention the dollar index at that 50% level on the weekly. Go check it yourself. 36.56, that's been the high of the day. Uh, the euro is trading at uh, 112.57. Uh, still nothing to be a buyer on, but I think it's close. Now, there's one thing you need to pay attention to, folks. Write this down on a piece of paper, 16,477. If we go below that, and we're only 30, uh, 50 points away, after moving 250 points lower in just a short period of time, if we go below 16,477 in the NASDAQ, that's an outside day with a hanging with a uh, shooting star pattern. Go look at the daily chart. I mean, we're way, way above the high, way below the high now. And if we take out that low, that means everybody's bought it in the last two days is underwater. That's not a good sign. That number in the uh, in the S&P would be uh, a lot lower. That would come in at uh, 47.86. Uh, 
But uh, we're we're not only 30 points, we're 40 points away in the Nasdaq, and with giving up 250 that fast, anything could happen. What I do on days like this, I'm watching for a 382 retracement. We haven't seen anything like that, but neither here nor there, that may or may not happen. I, I don't really know. The one thing I do know, folks, is that you've got to be able to quantify how much you're going to risk on these darn things. It don't make any difference because you're going to be right half the time, wrong half the time. You can still do well. And if you do your homework, you're going to be better than 50 percent. Uh, that's for sure. We also want to give more accolades to Mr. Z after that coffee move that he had, folks, 50 points straight up. That's just something you don't see very often. We're almost below 16,500 now. Remember, folks, 16,477. I start to think you're going to be seeing some uh, really big uh, corrections here in some of these things because the uh, Dream Team, um, uh, maybe that was it, what they had. I don't really know. All I can tell you is, uh, we in a, we're in a situation where uh, a lot of things are going to happen and volatility is going to blow you out of the water unless you're prepared. If you bought the crude oil, you made about uh, 1500 bucks right now. You made about 2000 in the heating oil. The gold picked up about five grand. So we'll see you tomorrow on the flip side with Dr. Al Larson, Thornton, Colorado, Money Tide.